Welcome back to Outriders. In this video, we are taking a look at the developer news for Thursday, September the 16th. And in this one, there's a massive essay about the Fortress mod in the game. I haven't followed this game for a couple of weeks, just I can't be bothered to load it up at all. The matchmaking sucks. There's just issue after issue. Every single update without fail at the moment is being delayed. They can never ever get them out on time. There's no talks of DLC or anything like that at the moment. So I just have no interest. The game's peaking 24 hour window, 1000 players on Steam. And that's a struggle. That's like peak times they're hitting 1000 and they, it, it should be way more than that. It's still a, a relatively fresh game. So jumping into this, general news. Our latest patch is still working through some issues raised during the submission process, blah, blah, blah. So the topic for discussion being Fortress. As part of today's news and to continue the previous week's discussions around the weapon mod meta, uh, we wanted to spend a bit of time taking a closer look at the Fortress mod and sharing our plans for it with you. As a reminder, the mod is one of the three core pillars, blah, blah, blah. So let's dissect it. A current key issue with Fortress is the players can receive the maximum buff value being 43% for very small amounts of armor, without having to invest into the armor stat through class nodes or movable progression layers such as armor mods. From a historical point of view, the intentions behind Fortress were that it should provide a damage buff for all players, who, or for players who committed to endurance builds with armor stacking, and who would therefore likely need to give up on offensive nodes from other branches. Problematically, Fortress is currently providing incredible value for very little investment. I mean, so what? The, the community, the player base, they found a meta. This issue became most pronounced when we rebalanced armor a few months ago, so that all gear would provide more armor overall. An easy fix here would be to correct the now broken armor to buff value calculation and require players to invest more into armor. However, this is an overly simplistic and imperfect solution, and it would very likely be seen as a heavy nerf, even though we would be returning the mod to its originally intended tank or bruiser class niche use. It would also not be a significant enough change to properly disrupt the meta. We expect that a new meta would simply form around a tank or bruiser class, with any non-tank or bruisers being kicked out of groups the way Devastators were before their potential was discovered. Uh, yeah, excuse me, this sort of stuff still happens with Devastators being kicked out of groups. Nowhere near as much because the player counts dipped. But we expect the new meta would simply form around tank and bruiser classes. You can't run a tank class in Outriders because the entire end game is based on time. You have to run DPS. The, the developers know that. They said it in a previous developer news on Thursday. I think it was the one just before this one. So it would have been September 9th. They said they know that the game is revolving around like entirely DPS. But now they're saying, oh, there would be a new meta forming around tank and bruiser classes. No, no, it wouldn't. Tanks are not going to be a meta in time-based content. They just seem to not understand this. And in terms of, uh, where was it? Where did they say it? The intentions behind Fortress were that it should provide a damage buff. Basically, the way they designed it, the way they added it into the game, it created a meta for players. They said from the get-go they don't want specific metas running in their game, which would have been fair enough, but the very first week after launch, they put out huge nerfs to player classes, character classes, and they didn't do anything to bring anything else in the game up. They waited months and months to do that, so therefore they... Did a nerf, did absolutely no buffs, and they didn't do anything to balance the meta. So they went against their own word, just from the, like, out of the gate, straight away. It also says here, we also don't want to simply make Fortress unviable for all but a niche class of builds, especially as we're aware that many players have committed huge amounts of hours into grinding in order to obtain this mod. Yeah, Fortress comes on the Death Shield. People 250 hours plus, just simply put, into going for that weapon. Another problem is that Fortress provides an omni-damage buff, meaning it buffs all output layers across the board. This means that regardless of your build direction, whether it's firepower or anomaly power, Fortress feels like a must-have. Generally speaking, it might not have been a big offender, as other mods could bring a comparable combat value, but the issue lies in that it provides a percentage-based percentage percentage uh, rather than a flat numbers-based buff. 
This leads to extreme hyperscaling of damage. And players will naturally always choose a reliable, ever-present mod buff that is active regardless of combat style or play pattern, especially when this mod increases total damage output by nearly a half, so 43%. That is what Fortress currently is. It's a best-in-slot mod, meaning that no weapon mod combo can really exist without Fortress as long as that's in its current state. Replacing it with another mod in your build can even mean that the replacement mod performs weaker than its true potential since it could always benefit from the 43% damage increase Fortress would provide. This is key. No matter how much we buff any other mod within the realms of reasonable balance, they will never be able to provide the same overall value the Fortress does, making those buffs inherently unable to displace Fortress. That is understandable. It, it's got such a big increase to the like the percentage of your damage buffs and all that sort of stuff. So not being able to bring everything up, that's completely understandable. My biggest problem with this, and the reason I'm bringing you this video, is because they have put so much time and effort into talking about Fortress. That's not what matters right now in the game. Bringing down a meta that players are using should not be anywhere near the top of that priority list. They should be focusing on cleaning up the game, improving the matchmaking by a metric fuck ton, and actually getting the game in a good state to where players want to come back and actually play the game and enjoy it, and then look into DLC. That's where they should be almost six months down the line. They should not be at the state of writing entire articles, essays, after one mod that's created a meta. It's appreciated to have insight, but at the same time, this should not be their focus. So it carries on to say, we are most interested in giving players a choice of using the greatest possible amount of different mods in combination with one another, which in turn will lead to much more compelling gameplay loops. For an example, we feel it'd be healthier for players and a lot more fun to be able to have six different mods on three weapons rather than the same two mods on all three weapons. However, Fortress currently blocks three weapon mod slots. It, it, it doesn't block the slots, it's being used in those slots. They're wording this all wrong and making it seem as though Fortress is breaking the game. In a way, yeah, because everyone's using Fortress, but it doesn't break the game in a way that's going to take from the experience. It's going to give you a better experience because you're performing better in-game. You're able to do the time-based endgame content faster. That's what they're not understanding. This has all become a thing because there's no space in the game for viability, diversity, anything like that. Because it all comes down to having to do it as fast as you possibly can. So finally, Fortress's current form makes it a fundamentally unfun, maybe even boring mod. No, that is just straight up bullshit. If it was not fun and even boring, players wouldn't use it. It requires no great thought, no gameplay loop, and no real skill before it provides its maximum bonus. Well, they provided no game fixes, no matchmaking fixes, no stability improvements, no nothing like that. And this is their game. They should take pride in what they have created. They should be passionate about fixing it, but they're not. Such uninteractive mods can be useful and necessary when creating specific builds. But if such a mod dominates the build meta across the entire spectrum as it currently does, it is fundamentally flawed. Just like your entire game. This is one of them situations if you looked in the mirror. It's a fundamentally flawed game. The core of this game is broken. And not only that, it's a lazy design. You have several story bosses chucked into the end game. There's not a lot that has been designed fresh for their end game content. And it's a £60 game. That's the biggest problem. If you're not on Game Pass, you're paying full AAA price when it's not that sort of a game. But moving on, the above exposition on Fortress, current, like Fortress's current form is long, but it's essential reading for anyone who wonders why it even needs to be changed. So what do they have planned for the future of it? A small reminder, they do not plan to address the issues of either Fortress or Moaning Winds before they have resolved the challenges that drove the creation of this meta and that continue to require its viability. You therefore do not need to worry about overly disruptive changes to the current power balance as long as the overall end-to-end endgame -end experience exists in its current form. So, the current design and logic is being fully reworked and is being replaced with fresh logic. Its new effect will be as follows. 
Shots increase your current armor and resistance by 3%, stacking up to 5 times. At maximum stacks, the buff is doubled and additionally grants a 30% damage increase for 10 seconds. Side note, players will need to perform 5 successful shots over 5 seconds to enter the full buff window. Stacks have a 1 second internal cooldown in order to streamline uptimes across all weapon types. So it's a big, big nerf. It is being The entire logic is being changed. The problem with that is this patch, this update, has been delayed for around a month. The update before that or the patch before that was also delayed for around a month. It took them two and a half months to fix the characters being wiped. They take a long time to sort all this stuff. Creating brand new, fresh logic for one mod in the game is not only going to take them a long time, it's probably not going to work how they want it to work, and therefore it's going to need more looking at, and that could be put into an update that takes them a further month to fix. So they could potentially completely bust the entire mod. They are putting too much time and effort and risk into changing one mod when it should be the entire game that's being rebalanced. It would probably take them, I don't even know, two years to fix the game properly if that was all they were working on. But they just, they don't have a clue. They wonder why players have disappeared. With, when I say players disappearing, I mean on Steam alone, we're talking lower than Avengers. Avengers is one of the biggest flops and it's worse than that because they just don't care. They don't understand what the player wants. They want people playing their game how they want them to play. Like, players don't get a choice to play how the player wants to play. It's how the developers want you playing. At this stage, six months later, when almost all of your player base is gone, you should not even be thinking about changing the mod around. You shouldn't be trying to focus on the meta. Fix your fucking game first. I don't know why they still don't understand that. The amount of people that have told them, the amount of videos that have been made, a lot from me. Because it's just time and time again, they do not listen they do not understand what the player wants. They just, like, why? They're going to make so much more money if they make a good game. That's all they've got to do. Square Enix are saying major franchise. That fell, like, as soon as they said it, that was an instant fail. It's never going to be a franchise. If they make a number two, if they're already working on it or whatever, because, like, uh, people can fly are working on two other games. So if Outriders 2 is one of those other games then it's just that people aren't going to buy it. They're going to be like, oh, what's the point? I, I did it the first time around. I'm not doing it again. They never fixed the first game properly. They didn't have a clue what they were doing. But this rework will address the issues described as follows. The mod will no longer rely on a broken armor stats calculation in order to pro uh, provide its maximum buff. Players who already possess Fortress and want to continue to play with it shouldn't feel complete night and day drop in power between the old and the new Fortress. While the damage buff will be an omni buff, the gameplay loop of needing to generate stacks through shots means the players may become more circumspect with regards to which builds can make the most of the new fortress. Additionally, stacking armor and resistance buffs will reward players who have opted into additional armor and resistance from nodes or mods by making them even more tanky. The buff is multiplicative of the current value. This means that if a player has 0% resistance, the mod will not provide a baseline value on its own. The multi-layered nature of the fortress means that if need be, it can be surgically balanced in a variety of ways. Finally, the mod's new logic will introduce a gameplay loop that will require players to employ some measure of observation, thinking and skill when using it in combat. Put differently, during phase one of the mod, Players will need to work to build the buff stacks, which can be observed through the mod's new visual effects. Phase 2 begins when the defensive and offensive stacks are at their maximum. At this point, players will have a window of time during which they will be the most tanky and most powerful they can be. This is the moment when diving deeper into combat will make the most sense as you will survive longer and dish out more damage, a key moment to unload your skills and other mods and effects. As the buff wanes, players will find it prudent to pull back a bit and rebuild their stacks, wasting more time in time-based content. This will lead to a natural ebb and flow of combat, while still enabling players to use Fortress to deal increased damage by 30% during key moments of the battle. Played well, the new one can reach a 93% uptime for defensive buffs and 75% uptime for the offensive buff. This means that when a player fights enemies for a full minute, 45 seconds of that time could be spent in the increased damage window. 
You may have noticed the new fortress will provide a max 30% damage buff. Equally, some of you may feel that the new one doesn't sound viable within your preferred playstyle. If you feel that this is a nerf when compared to the previous fortress uh, constant 43%, fear not. As part of our upcoming wider rebalance, we'll be buffing many other mods. Some legendary gear sets and if possible, what do you mean if possible? Certain aspects of the class skill trees. It's your game, you've designed it, of course you can do that. All these changes are intended to keep players as powerful as possible, whether or not because it's a nerf, while making Fortress an optional rather than an essential mod. It's not essential, I don't use Fortress, I can still go to tier 15. It's just making things faster. There are, like, I use Moaning Wind, so I use the other half of the meta that they've built. So, yeah, Fortress Moaning Winds, they are very, very powerful mods. Most players, if not all, do use them mods. But that's because of the way they've been designed. And the, like, we'll finish this up and then we'll have a little chat at the end. So this will reduce the reliance on must-have mods while also unlocking a much greater and more fun build diversity as other mods and playstyles become much more viable. We are hoping to create a snippet of gameplay using the new one so that you can see it in action before it's implemented. We'll share this in the future. For now, thank you so much for reading and participating. We look forward to hearing what you think about the planned changes. Well, I don't like them. Straight off the bat, I do not agree with this at all. Because... As I was saying, like, towards the end, they were talking about, like, here, this would reduce the reliance of must-have mods while also unlocking a much greater and more fun build diversity. Who are they to judge how you're having fun in the game? You have fun the way you have fun. If that's using Fortress, if it's using, what is it, like, Grand Opening, uh, Bone Shrapnel, whatever them bloody mods are called, you find your own fun in the game. The first thing they should be doing is fixing, and I, I don't mean the bandaging, I mean fully, re, like, entirely building up the matchmaking from scratch. They need to fix that sort of stuff. The servers, they need to go. They need to completely change the servers. It's not acceptable for a development team to sit there and write all this stuff talking about one mod in the game that does, like, it's going to have a negative impact on the game. That's a 100% fact, because players will be pissy about it being changed. And rightfully so, because right now at this moment in time, they shouldn't be touching it. They shouldn't even be thinking of writing stuff like this. This is the sort of depth and insight you need to a full-on patch. Not just something like, Fixed a bug that was preventing players from reviving themselves and other players after using... Like, like, even with patch notes that sort of vague and simple, they need to explain why it's taken a long time to get these patches out. Why it's taken them so long to actually work on patches. They said they want to get gameplay out for this update, like, for this updated Fortress mod soon. And they'll talk about it in the future. How long in the future? And not only that, players fear not... We're going to be rebalancing the other mods. So say for an example, uh, end of November, this Fortress mod update comes out, yet they don't bother doing anything with other mods until the beginning of February next year. Then what? There's no rebalance for anything else. They go they're going to have to drop this into a big update that focuses on the entire like like mod system, basically. They're going to have to rework a lot of it, and that shouldn't be priority. They should be fixing the issues within the game, matchmaking, all the bugs and stuff. And at this stage, six months later, there's a thousand players in a 24-hour window on Steam. DLC should be spoken about. Fortress Moaning Winds shouldn't be touched until the game is in a much, much better state. But that's my opinion on it, and I thought, like, it, it was a good read. Like, I appreciate getting the insight from the developers. I just feel it's the wrong thing to give me insight to. I, I don't care about Fortress and the way it's being changed. I care about why it's the focus and why the things that are actually important to the player are not the focus. But that's going to do it for the video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it.